Hello Spirit, so months ago I went back into the world of Maginators, the final installment to the now graveyard franchise Skylanders. And now that I'm more confident with reviews and that I've replayed it, I'm here to review this shit show without further ado. <laughs> So this game is very far from perfect, dare I say worst in the franchise, and even as a kid I felt like something was missing. Yeah, we're doing this first. As a kid, I liked the story because I was a dumb 12 year old, and then again, I did hate some of the levels at that age. It is very apparent Activision didn't have any ideas slash chapters for the story because while some of the chapters focus on chaos using mind magic, you also get to use mind magic, but just in one level one level. And in the first two chapters, it focuses on the introduction to Imaginite, which is dropped, never used, or brought up again. The first chapter introduces us to the idea of there being ancient, as well as Imaginite and mind magic. Future Spirit here, the first chapter actually developed further on to the Ancients. I couldn't remember anything about them at the time, so yeah, sorry. Then in the second chapter, they focus on Imaginite in the Mushroom River, yet it isn't fucking used or even applied that it's being used ever again. Now, how can I sum the story up? It feels like they were jingling keys in front of a child. Oh, it's about mind magic. Oh, it's about Imaginite. Oh, it's about a vortex defeating a guacamole monster, making a Trojan horse cake. And I didn't even mention, I kid you not, the focus lore on the earlier Skylanders. If what I said didn't tell you how bad the story is, this should. Because in the sixth installment in the franchise, they give the on-brand Skylanders voices and personalities in cutscenes. But they had the other main characters take back seats. If Maddox is playing a bigger role than Callie or Flynn, something's wrong. I also think that uh, when writing this, they were trying to resemble that of the animated show, Skylanders Academy. But it's not just that, they also gave the other Skylanders aspirations or lore to their powers slash culture. Sky Fortress is about Jetfax species battleship hangar. Fizzland is about Pop Fizz's beast potions. The Golden Arcade was about Trigger Happy. Dragon Temple was about Spyro. Those were four levels in a row. Now, exploring the separate Skylanders lore would be cool to explore. If it wasn't the sixth game, the final fucking game. And remember when I said that the main characters took back seats? Well, where were they? Hugo, Kelly, Flynn, and more. Well, they make cameos at best. Hugo gives you chess for finding books lost across the entire hub world. Carly is in, I think, a single level. Flynn is your way to get out of the academy and make the Skystone's appearance alongside Tessa. So yeah, the characters you've grown to like take bat seats. Though some make appearances in the Sensei realms, not a lot though. As for the holes in the story, they were transparently written horribly. One to name was the betrayal of the brain, and where there's absolutely no prior build up of this brain's thinking. Oh, but don't worry, he shows resentment during the final battle for absolutely no reason, and joined your team. And this was something I never understood because, besides a few insults during the battle, the two got along. They had the same level of thinking. Another was, how did his partner not know what the Skyliners were up to? F fuck the cape part, the brain is one of the smartest characters in the game to date, and yet he somehow didn't see what the Skylanders plans were? Cause alright, let me put this in perspective. Now, from what we've been told, the brain is said to have been defeated and locked away, and it was revealed by the dragon's magic they performed thousands of years ago. So if he was originally stopped because of dragon magic, shouldn't he have picked up on why the Skylanders were at a dragon temple? for absolutely no reason. And I'm using another example connected to the mind control saga. So after Skylands was mind controlled, Kale said every Mabu, Sheep, Skylander under his belt. And because plot, Spyro is the only one left standing. And while he does give an answer to why he's not mind controlled, how does he know? It, it, it just felt like expedition for the sake of moving the plot horribly. Because he's perceived as a really dumb dragon in this. And this is the same dragon that misunderstood Stealth Elf's request in the third level. And not only that, but at the end of the level, he finds the dragons. I... Uh, w w where were they? And it's not just that, but it's also that the Skylander you control isn't mind controlled either. Regardless if I picked a Sensei or Imaginator, what makes us immune? Guy 
Skylanders games, except for the first, have gimmicks to give it a new coat of paint. Giant Skylanders, swappable characters, playing as villains with traps, you get the point. But they sent out Plan OC. Creation crystals were the new gimmick to the game, where you could create your own Skylander. You could alter their look, but once you pick the class, good luck trying to get anything else. And this crystal shit was also used in Skylanders Academy featuring Dan TDM. Well, you play the whopping 10 story chapters, you could find legendary frames, soul gems, and even imaginite chests, which allowed you to upgrade their weapons and armor, or even change your imaginate's body later on. Now, you might be wondering why I suddenly just stopped talking about microtransactions. Well, it's really simple. They are the microtransactions. For these prices, you could buy imaginite chests, and that on itself is so stupid. Considering they're in every fucking level, but don't worry, there's a twist spending some money will allow you to get legendary items. Ooh. So yeah, Activision have added really bad gimmick and transactions into their game. But actually, you know what? I forgot about the actual gimmick. <laughs> I should preface that I don't hate the gimmick. It's definitely one of my favorites since, come on, some of these were Garbo. But uh, creating a Skylander is really bad. Cause as I said earlier, you can't actually change classes or even reset it normally. Once you picked it, you're fucked kiddo. But it's not just that, the character customizer isn't really good either. So yeah, get this, the entire gimmick isn't really great. Whenever I tried to make a character, whether younger or even now, I don't feel like I had a lot of control to make the character I want, or at least how I want them to look. Don't get me wrong, I like customizing my characters, but how they turned out wasn't fun. So unlocking stronger armor, weapons, voices, or even sound effects is fine. That's what most games do when it comes to that kind of look, either for beneficial or cosmetic gain. And you'll get more as the game progresses because of the chest at every step. But with the look of the characters, Activision will hand you ones you don't want. In other words, you gamble for what you want if you buy them. For the rest of the good, the bad, and the ugly looks, even when you complete the 10 chapters, you haven't even locked half the sets. You'd have to replay all the levels over and over and over and over again, constantly do arena battles, do brain bonus levels, go for surprise attacks, and follow rats. And yes, I didn't include elemental areas since not everyone would have all of them, or at least have it one of each elemental sensei. And even once you get every piece you want, there's not much original content to do. There's a lot of cosmetics, sure, but that's it. Once you've completed the game 100%, you only have repeating fully completed levels to get the rest of the set you actually want. Oh, but it doesn't end there. I hate the fucking decisions they made with two of the classes. Now, instead of giving people an option to have entire bodies for two of the classes, what they give is instead this, a no-legged swashbuckler and a walking head ninja. Just why? Now, these alone were disappointing to see as a kid, and my main problem is why was this even here? Even both classes have characters with legs or entire bodies. For example, the main issue with the swashbuckling class is that they use a swashbuckler with legs as a boss. And unsurprisingly, two out of three of the swashbucklers have fucking legs. They don't give us an option to have legs and a tail, just a tail. And the same is said about the ninja class. Two out of three of the ninjas who use ninja stars have entire bodies. Hell, Starcast literally has an extra pair of fucking arms. Future Spirit here, I just realized that the Quickshot class also has the body of a ninja. Oh, but I'm not done, Activision. I still got the pan in hand. Another issue is the entire idea of creating your own character. Each new Skylander in every game has been unique in some way. And when a lot of Skylanders you've grown up to love have been dragons, fish, sharks, this thing, we don't even get to pick their species, their body type. This doesn't count since it's tallness and muscles. Your Skylanders have to be humanoid battlers, spirit-like swashbucklers, or bodiless ninjas, and that's not really original. And so with this crappy system, I tried making two of my characters into the game, which I couldn't even get to a level I even liked. And that's because I literally had nothing to work with. They give you nothing to create your character than basic figures that half of them just look bad. But hey, they had fucking Flint head in there. Without Patrick Warburton's voice as an option, 
Fucking missed opportunity. So yeah, too many cosmetics, not enough content, bad decisions when making two of their classes, and not allowing actual original Skylanders to be made. <laughs> Now, this is what sucked most about this game, worse than the creation shit. You know how whatever Skylander from any previous game can be used in future games? Well, actually they do allow you to have that. But with the cost of the Gen 1 through 5 Skylanders being nerfed a bunch. To sell as many senseis and crystals as they could, I could tell they just needed to make sure the characters you played were crap. And that's so you could have more senseis and abandon your weakling Skylanders. And honestly that sucked, since early in the year I remembered growing a bunch of Skylanders I had ready to use crystals, senseis and the other gen Skylanders, only to find out they were utterly weak against every and any enemy, regardless of the mode they were in. Fighting these bosses at the end of each level just wasn't fun, and I wish they changed the formula just once. Now, something I like about the other games is fighting enemies with different skills. It gives us a new experience rather than the same rehashing, which is what Imaginators does. But they basically hand us the same boss with a different weapon. Now, obviously, I won't deny some of the unique playstyles of some of the characters. For example, the Brawler class boss has you having to deal damage after he swung three hits, or with the ninja you have to dodge the things on the floor, but a majority of them are an absolute embarrassment to pass bosses in these games. Now, these villains are all the same, they literally have no difference in terms of fighting them. Fight a Doomlander's first attack, knock its armor off. They get a secret ability, armor off. They run out of ideas and give grunts, Deadlander. There's no actual threat in fighting them unless you're a nightmare, probably. A lot are easier to dodge, or some you need to think about how to fight them, for some because then the other bosses can be attacked easily since all they do is this. Oh, oh my god, this is the worst handling of, well, fucking anything I've ever seen before. Now, dragon gliding was introduced as a method of travel in the hub world. It allows you to go to different islands in the end of the dragon temple, and then the other islands in the MAP. But the thing is that they fucked it up. You have literally no control when you're gliding. I thought it would be fun to glide to different islands again, but no, just no. When you get these dragon wings, you move really slowly and the controls are only worse. You barely turn left or right and if you try to glide backwards, you just stop dead in your tracks. And you can't even glide down or have some way to drop down. You have to patiently wait until you're near the ground. You can't just fall into the abyss or fall into an island. No, you have to glide until the game goes, All right. <laughs> I'm not going to give my opinion on the design of it because, eh, whatever, cut corners. You just have to make it fun to control. <music> Amongst this mess, have they done something well with the game? <music> now, each game has their fair share of giving us Skyliners with unique designs and amazing playstyles. In Imaginators, I have to say, does it the best. <laughs> <laughs> I am not referring to the creation crystals because, well, they're not as good or enhanced as the actual figures. But yeah, they knocked it out of the park with their senseis. While they themselves only offer a single new ability and unlocking sensei realms, they don't offer anything new in content, but they do offer you a platter of different playstyles to choose from with your money. Want to play as a fast damaging 4 armed ninja who can shoot 4 shurikens, summon a megastar and ship, and go invisible in front of enemies? Starcast is your guy. Want to play as a mother that can zap her son with lightning, have more attack when he's out playing, more defense when he's with you, and attack with two swords? Then go bad juju. And that is only a handful of the senseis you can play, and there are many more before price tags are slapped onto them. It's been six fucking years, guys. But besides how they play, what I absolutely love is their unique designs, or at least the new characters' designs. Because quite frankly, bringing back the old trap teen villains and I know I'll receive flack for this, was the worst decision activation made in this game. You've been pranked by the Pink Patrol. Ha! Remember that show? Uh, 
that in all seriousness, I believe one of the greater decisions by Activision in this game was having trap team villains. And I must say, they didn't choose a bad one. They're all uniquely designed and recognizable from the game they came from. Bad Juju is definitely my favorite. So yeah, Activision gave us another good Skyliner roster. And dare I say the best. Get bold, wait, get bold, twisted nightmare in your mind. Surprisingly, this hub world is well made. While I do sometimes find it hard to decipher where each level is, it's actually a better hub world than the previous games. Except the first. The first is the best. <laughs> Besides gliding, you can also take cannons over to different islands, which has different realms, caves, or bonus brain levels. So with every hole you fall into, every cave you open, or you'll get a reward of some kind, whether enemies, XP, coins, or the chests. Though I do want to point out that I would prefer to be able to choose the level, or at least be given the option. I had to go to one of the realms with her, always repeating the same garbage. I fucking hated this character, even as a kid. Okay, so I like the new Sky Stones. Now, I'm not sure if this is a hated topic in the fandom. If it is, I'm sorry, I prefer this version, honestly. Now, looking back, I, uh, totally forgot you could buy or own Skystones and put them into your deck. And then I checked out the later editions and it just made it look like a card game instead of its simplistic rules and giants. But Imaginators brings it back, giving you and your opponent an equal chance of winning or losing. Honestly, when you're packing powerful decks, it's clear you're going to be on top. There's no denying that, but this adds, I mean, some level of challenge when finding an AI. And plus you can actually see the cards they have, and make strategic moves that help you win. Or make you lose. Kind of like chess. But yeah, doing Sky Zones was just something to do. Alright, this isn't actually part of the review, I just have this headcanon that I wanted to tell you in a video. Now, there's a new, well, I say new despite it being six years ago. God, this game is old. So yeah, one of the new Skylander senseis was called Mr. Cat. And as a kid, and now actually, I couldn't figure out Mr. Cat's gender. Though I think, again, think. As a kid, I looked up on the wiki when he said he was a male. But honestly, now that I know about LGBTQ and I can't help but think of a little headcanon. So I believe Mr. Cat is a trans male, or at least under the trans umbrella. And I don't really want to dive into it without it sounding off. I literally tried rewording my thinking three times and obviously none of it worked out. This was just a small segment I wanted to include. Obviously, I didn't cover everything. <laughs> I'm not editing a 30 minute video, but I'd recommend more in-depth reviews on topics I didn't touch upon in here. Unfortunately, this game is an absolute mess and definitely wasn't the right send off to the franchise, which is why I was mainly negative through this video. Activision and Toy for Bob had blueprints for a successful franchise, but they couldn't bring the same magic the first couple games did. The story was never strong in the games, besides the first, but it always had creative villains, fun ways to make levels more fun and creative, and more. But Imaginators? It had the worst story, the worst mechanics, the worst bosses, the same villain, microtransactions, so yeah, it wasn't looking positive. Though it did fix or at least keep what was integral to them, they had the best Skylanders roster since the first game, the hub world is more open and rewarding, and Skystone's return and it was a lot more balanced. So yeah, if I had to rate this game, I'd say 4 out of 10. It has a lot of bad elements that outweighed the positives. It didn't make it feel like it, the game it originated from. But they did go off with a bang with giving the fans what they wanted. 